Yeah, Chuck Norris, dude. Chuck Norris is amazing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Keanu's on the same level as Chuck Norris and Jackie Chan. Jackie Norris versus Chuck Chan. <laughs> Jack. Okay, so everybody kind of says Jackie Chan. Also, Simmy, I have them with your friend. Mm. Okay, I need to maybe walk 90 degrees around him. It's greedy to shield dash through the projectiles. So the reason I'm doing that next is so I can get close enough to him so then I can avoid the big laser. Reposition for the beam, okay. Two hit right there. Okay. Okay, next. I think you're right again. Honestly, y'all, I think I'm gonna go against popular opinion. I think Chuck Norris would win. I would take Chuck Norris over Jackie Chan. I would. where they move that's where the laser attacks wait next you're saying that they the diamonds mark where they're gonna hit you can't and should kill the crystals in the dark says r4 okay okay thank you <laughs> Levi, uh, yeah, I'll just just charge back, just do a charge back real quick on that ten dollars, Levi, and you're set. You're set, bro. Yep, that's your paid money.
try to dash it close. And I'm dead. Uh, Scoop, no. Uh, but Scoop, Monday, make sure you're in office because we're getting breakfast, lunch, and ice cream. The entire, like, everybody is in the center. So, heads up. Uh, yes, Scoop, yeah. End of fiscal year, and we need to spend money. going on Mondays. <laughs> Alright, next. See you in a second. Monday sounds delightful. <laughs> mm. Okay. I need to not dash up through those. Yeah, I just need to not dash through the. The energy blasts, the little ones. I need to not dash through those. Because next is right. Every time I do that, I just get the waylaid by that beam. Suggest say towards the center of the arena? Really? Okay. stay in the center like I was that entire fight. Uh, I got hit twice there, and I panicked, so I wanted to heal. Healing takes a second, so then I got hit by the beam. Okay. Keep getting like tunnel visioned on him and just like run in. Oh yeah, for sure, Levi. Yeah, next. You're totally right. I'm starting to see that now.
pit and we ha hide over here. Oh, I'm out of bullets. This is gonna hurt. A lot of these fights remind me of the game Fury for the PS4. And if y'all play that? Okay. Get hits in. Heal. Yes. I I'm nervous to think that's it. That might just be phase one. Oh, we're still attacking him. Thanks for the GG's, y'all. Thank you so much for the support and all the tips. Woo! That was epic, Levi. Wait, should I be doing something? Heal. I can't attack. I can't shoot. Should I just try to leave? Oh, the dog! Guys, should y'all see the dog? This is the dog from all the... the, the all the cutscenes. Oh, we're coughing a lot now, y'all. A lot of blood chat. Next, welcome back. We're currently falling apart following a dog and bleeding everywhere.
Read a campfire. know next i'm very confused um so i was told by a uh, few people including the community manager for this game who was in our show last time that this game is based on the creator's life in a sense and his struggle and his fight with, I think, heart disease or some kind of illness that he had. I'm guessing he lost in the end? But then what's, what's with the dog? What's with the pillars? What's with this rundown post-apocalyptic world? What? I don't know, I'm just left with so many questions. Yeah, Levi, that's a good point. When this music playing is so much more somber and melancholy than the rest of the game. He could save the world, but in, but in the end, his own potty would take him out. Yeah, Levi. Yeah, DJ, it's a pretty sad moment. I think that... abstract from the start and I have tr trouble understanding abstract games and just things in general pieces of art I mean that's what this game is that's what games are they're art abstract art is somewhat lost on me to be honest That's really good. Uh, DJ, what's next? Um, for today's stream, we'll probably be ending early. Um, on the channel, we'll be continuing Tales of Vesperia on Wednesday, Thursday. Or excuse me, on Tuesday, Wednesdays. Uh, Thursdays will be uh, World of Warcraft Classic. And then at the end of September, uh, September 30th, we will be starting Link's Awakening. Also, heads up, y'all, Link's 
Awakening, uh, September 30th, that game, um, or the game is not early, but September 30th is my one year anniversary being a Twitch affiliate. So, we have, this should be a fun stream for us. I think that'll be the interpretation of players, kind of come to your own conclusion. Yeah, Levi, it could be like that. And honestly, Levi, I hate those kind of stories. Yeah, DJ, if you want to crack it. Um, I think what we're actually going to do next, though, is... <sighs> Look up what this game means. Because apparently, like, this is based on his life. So let me Google that. Hyper Light Drifter Meaning? Googling what it is. Okay. Just one last question about Hyperlight Drifter. Have you already beaten Lionel Messi? Is is that is that a legitimate question or a joke? I don't get it. these uh credits run out because i want to uh all these people deserve their deserve their time so i'm over here looking for joke yeah dj for sure yeah we don't we don't get it so here's this article from the guardian at theguardian.com i'll go and throw this article in chat um and it's titled Hyperlight Drifter, How Heart Disease Inspired One of 2016's Greatest Games. Hyperlight Drifter is a game about struggle. Released in March to wide critical acclaim, it opens a wordless with a wordless three-minute animation in which an unknown land is ravished by a blinding explosion. A lake of blood forms and quickly fills with the corpses of alien creatures. It looks like a standard sci-fi fiction tale of doomed planets and extraterrestrial invasions. But it turns out these scenes of massacre are visions of a single person, the titular Drifter. Titular Drifter. Put in eight hours or so to beat Hyperlight Drifter, and it's likely you won't learn much about its mysterious world. This is an action role-playing game. It borrows the best parts of classic titles such as The Legend of Zelda and Diablo to produce something that looks like a classic 1990s console adventure. Okay. Uh... It's a game that shows rather than tells and expects you to pay attention to its every detail to piece it all together. But everything you need to know about the game's underlying story is there in that opening animation which recurs like a nightmare throughout the journey. In it, you see the drifter coughing up 
bright pink blood bent over in pain as their insides ripped apart. Right after that, the character is shown entering a colossal fight with a large, relentless monster made of black ooze, which eventually engulfs the drifter in a dark, webby poison. This is all a metaphor, and it is about the game's developer, Alex Preston. Quote, I have dealt with serious health issues since I was born, a congenital heart disease to start, he says. A plethora of di digestive and immune system problems have left me hospitalized on numerous occasions, often near death. This gives me a certain perspective on life and plays into the stories I want to tell. Still quoting Alex, the main character in Hyperlight Drifter suffers from a deadly disease, deadly is illness, one he is de desperately seeking a cure for. It haunts him endlessly. That's something I'm keenly familiar with." End quote. Hyperlight Drifter isn't the first time that Preston has channeled his fluctuating health and proximity to it into art. He explored the subject during college in the form of painting and film, experimenting with both abstract and hyper-real styles. Starting a quote, I made a lot of unsatisfying, straight-up bad work, he says. I think most art students should. I threw stuff at the wall to see what would stick, what resonated with me and my peers. It was incredibly helpful to make some trashy work that eventually burned or gave way as it made me a better artist, brought me closer to defining what I actually wanted to say with any of my work moving forward." End quote. Preston underwent grueling open-heart surgery as a baby and had a pacemaker installed a few years ago. The sense of physical fatigue had been with him his whole life. Quote, I see my cardiologist every six months, as well as another for cholesterol and pacemaker checkups, he says. I just had a heart valve installed in November of 2015. Again, this article was made in 2016. R4, thank you for being here. I'm sorry for the late response. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the community. Uh, DJ's right. We do start every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, starting at 6 o'clock central. And uh, R4, if you're still around, always remember that you matter. Thank you so much, man. Continuing. I still struggle with daily with diet, medications, trying to feel less horrible, like horrible garbage so I can get up and work on something. My life will never be normal. I doubt my health will get much better. There's always going to be problems, and I suspect this state of generally feeling bad is sticking around for some time, but I currently have enough support through family, friends, people I care about, and my work that I can deal with the struggle this month, at least, end quote. It's his re reliance on machines and skilled doctor that led him to name Preston Studio Heart Machine. It's the name under which Preston intends to make his most ambitious and personal projects. Quote, the biggest component here is my ability to tell a story I can identify with expressing something personal to a larger audience so I can feel more connected and have an outlet for the many emotions that crop up around life-altering issues," Preston says. End quote. This was a dream he had in mind when putting Hyperlight Drifter, the studio's debut, on Kickstarter back in 2013. A month later, his game raised $645,159 in funding. Far, far beyond the $27,000 Preston initially was looking for to make the full game. The original plan was to have Hyperlight Drifter finished and released in 2014. However, an opportunity provided by the success of the crowdfunding campaign meant Preston was able to expand the scope of the project. He also suffered from health problems at the time, meaning that certain development goals had to be delayed. The combination pushed the game's release date back into 2016. Okay, so now he's talking more about 
the development of it. More about the development. More about the development. Over time, messages of support from people all around the world, Hyperlight Strifter's story shifted from being the about the struggle of one person to the struggle of many. The game itself upholds through this ambiguity, 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 by avoiding words and clearly defined narrative, people are able to project their own experiences with illness and pain onto it. It is a canvas for these people and one that encourages them to bite down and overcome their struggles just as the Drifter does. I'm fairly satisfied, says Preston, reflecting on the finished game. There's always more you want to do, more polish, more content, more ideas that never make it into the work with scope and scale. The story, the underlying messages, for those who care to dig and observe a bit, I feel communicates what I've wanted. People identify with it. They feel an attachment. Hyperlight Drifter is only the beginning of a larger endeavor for Preston. For him, the success in achieving creating games so personal yet so far-reaching is part of a struggle that continues beyond the game. He can't just turn it off. Quote, I have a deep need to keep funneling my personal nightmares and frustrations into my work. He says, keeping me functional, I don't think I can avoid it. Wow. That's the thing. <sighs> That's... Yeah, it did, DJ. It really did. Um... Yeah, next you were totally on point, and so was Levi. It was... The gift's game was left to interpretation. It was left to project yourself onto it. It was, it was supposed to relate to anyone going through struggles. Through going through a hard a hard time and you could push through it. Wow. Wow, yeah. Yeah, Simi. Uh, stalking? I don't know yet. There's no plans. No plans for another Spider-Man stream currently. Uh, upcoming games on the channel include uh, uh, World of Warcraft Classic, Link's Awakening, um, Oninoki, Oninaki, and uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Those are the ones coming up on the channel, along with Tales of Vesperia that we're going to finish. Um, as of right now, there's no plans for a Spider-Man stream. I think I'm kind of done with that for now. I may return to it, but I think for now I'm done with it. Okay, I think at this point, everything that they're showing are the supporters. So. Yeah, so what I'm thinking next is that WoW Classic will be a game that I can play both on and off stream. Um, and I think it'll be our Thursday game for a while. So we're going to have one main game that we play Tuesday, Wednesdays and push the, push the story up, like Tales of Vesperia, um, Link's Awakening, Oninoki, like those kind of games, right? And then Thursdays, for a bit of variety and a break from that main story, we'll do uh, WoW Classic. Um, that's assuming that I fall in love with it. Because you're right, it is very grindy. It, it's very different from Retail WoW. I didn't play original Vanilla when it came out, so... Yeah. Um, of course, I do enjoy grindy games. I enjoy repetitive acti actions that are just chill. So... 
yes, Goop's gonna be joining in. And if anyone else wants to, details are in the announcements in our Discord. So. I hope so, Simi. Yeah, so that anyone and everyone is available to, is welcome to join. So. I hope so, Scoop. I know Simi said she was gonna roll a character on, on our server to play with us. You want to. Uh, I think Clark wanted to join us as well. So, like, right there, like, we have, like, three or four people who just want to hang out and, like, level together. And I think that would be a ton of fun. Um, and if we maybe pick up other people along the way who come into our community and end up liking us, well, then, hey, that's awesome. So, okay, uh, I guess let's, oh. Apparently, if you press down, it fast forwards. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, so Scoop uh, does have a guild that he's an officer in. Um, heads up, it is not family friendly. Um, I went ahead and accepted his invite, and I plan on hanging out with them for a bit and checking out their guild. If it turns out to be very mature, like a lot of the time, I probably won't stay in that guild just so everyone's on the same page so we'll see because i i do want to i'm okay with like hanging out with people who like cuss occasionally or whatever but if it's like constantly like very lewd and crude like that might be too much for the stream you know what i mean so we'll see especially like if we if i ever get to the point of rating and a lot of people are in voice chat on the stream and yeah it is we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes Okay, it's good. Okay. That's a good point, Simi. I could just, like, have something over that. You're usually borderline next. <laughs> no worries. For sure, DJ. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's the biggest thing, is, like, yeah, there's, there's people... People are always going through something. And you're not alone. There it is. <laughs> oh, thanks, Scoop. Okay, I appreciate that. And Leva, yeah, I think that's all the backers from the Kickstarter. And there we go, y'all. That is Hyper Light Drifter. Super cool. Alrighty. Um...